I have a problem. I like to read multiple books at once, but it's starting to get out of hand. I really tried to film this. I decided to film outside and that was a mistake. Why did they have to hoover now? Out of all the times, they decided to hoover now. know what? I'll be back. They stopped hoovering but someone started drilling. <sighs> oh no, there's a helicopter. So basically what I'm gonna try and do is sit outside because it's really sunny at the moment. I've closed my window. You're welcome because it's so noisy outside and there's, oh, there's someone looking for their missing cat. Um, around my street and obviously they keep having conversations with neighbours and so it's distracting but I hope they find their cat Fel Felis? Fel Feli? I hope they find them so I've set up a little picnic blanket cushions basically a little reading nook outside while it's we're having this little heat wave so I'm gonna sit outside and try and finish all the books that I've started. I did start out with six. I did finish one yesterday. Thank you. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't. I did finish Arm of the Sphinx. I don't know whether I'll include the clip that I filmed me talking about it outside because I was speaking really quietly. But this was the first one I finished. This is the sequel to uh, Settle in a Sense by Josiah Bancroft. This is Arm of the Sphinx. I can't really give away too much of what this is about, but it's. Following Sunland's journey after he's ascended the Tower of Babel. All I can really say is that I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one. I feel like majority of it was set on a ship and I've realised I don't like books set on ships <laughs> because a lot of it is about working and the terminology used and how to man a ship and I just really don't care about that. Again, I'm not going to say what the ship is, why they're on a ship, but they're on a ship and I just found that a bit tedious. There was more plot points brought in and questions brought up like uh, how did the tower come about? What was the tower actually made for? So I thought that was interesting and that was a great way to progress the story because the main story is supposed to be suddenly trying to find his wife who's missing in the tower but most of this wasn't about that. Obviously that's their main goal but Everything that's happening isn't about his wife because his wife's not there. So yeah, there's two books left in the series. I kind of know where they're kind of going with it. Um, I hope he finds his wife soon. <laughs> I still love his writing style and I love his characters and the way his imagination is insane and I love it. Some of these other books were in my series I need to finish video, but I plan to finish Ivory and Bone by Judy Eshbaugh. Um, and I am there. A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark and I am there. Reboot by Amy Tintara and I am probably about halfway through this one. And Platform 7 by Louise Doughty which I am... I've only kind of just started this. This one is going a lot slower than all the others. And I also have a audiobook. <laughs> which I need to finish. I left my books outside overnight because obviously it's hot and it's not going to damage the books but but because of that I didn't have a book to read in the evening so I started another book. <laughs> Honestly I'm a mess but I started Magic by Septimus Heat. No? No? Magic by Angie Sage. Sorry. But I've only just started this one so I don't know whether I count this. We'll see. We'll see how quickly I read these. And then if I read them before the heat wave finishes, then <laughs> I'll continue reading this. So yeah, I'm going to try filming more outside. I just get very self-conscious that everyone's listening to me. So let's go outside and read. Pigeon that just sits up there. It got scared and it flew off, and I was just sitting on the fence. 
waiting for me to move so it can go back. So anyway, while that pigeon stares at me, I'm going to read. Logically, I should read this one because I'm like, I barely started it. I might as well get some way through it, but it's the slowest one to read. Really, I should finish this one because I'm closest to finishing it. Yeah, I'll do that. Alright, let's finish reading Ivory and Bone. finished ivory and bone it's there's a fly i think i started about 12 so it's been an hour and a half finished one book doing good to be honest i don't really have a huge amount to say about ivory and bone it's a middle grade book about set kind of in the stone age ice age when mammoths were around and it basically tells the story of two clans um who are rivals with each other it's sort of like romeo and juliet and the boy comes across the girl from the other clan and like basically falls in love with her and it's basically telling the story of how the clan his clan is trying to win over the affections of this other clan because of resources and things like the other clan has better resources and there was this big feud that happened like five years ago or something and it caused this rift which is fine it's like a decent enough storyline set in sort of like a prehistoric time where they hunt mammoths of bison so while that's all said and good drama and the action wasn't Although it was really well written, I enjoyed like the descriptions of the planes that they lived on and uh, the description of like the, the seal skins and things and hunting. But my biggest gripe with this book is that it was, it was first person, but it was addressed to the girl that he fancied. So that bit was in second person. So he'd be like, I, I did this, I did that, but I did this for you. And this might have been fine for whenever this book was written, it was probably really cute and not cringy. But after watching You on Netflix, it just gives it a whole new flavour. Like I've literally just got Joe in my head going. And then I watched You. You were beautiful. You were not like the others. <laughs> and it was just every time it came across, like especially when um, the writer would just put you as a separate sentence. I was like, oh. I think addressing a character as you will forever be tainted. <laughs> the action at the end, it kind of felt a bit abstract. It was like, where did this come from? It was like a good action scene. I enjoyed the big climax at the end, but it was a bit like, okay, we weren't leading up to this, but suddenly we are. Overall, there was nothing like hugely bad about the book. It was okay. Decent enough. Three stars. I just needed to finish it. It's just been too long. <laughs> and I started picking it up and I realised that I'd forgotten all the characters. I last read it about two months ago and there is a lot of characters. So after picking it back up, I just kind of went along with it. I didn't really worry too much that I didn't know who anyone was. <laughs> yeah, Baba. Have you found the missing cat yet? No. Okay, I'm gonna go have some food and then we'll start the next book. job interview and it was the sweatiest interview I've ever been in. They had fans in every room but from the room that I was in like I think I was slowly becoming more and more bedraggled as the interview went on I thought it lasted like an hour it was half an hour. <laughs> Let's not talk about that so my book. 
I'm halfway through this now. Um, it's going really well. I'm, oh. This is really good. It kind of reminds me of Fantastic Beasts because the main character, she is basically working for the Ministry. Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments and Supernatural Entities. So she's kind of in, the, in charge of supernatural things and then a supernatural thing comes back and she has to solve the mystery along with her new colleague. Basically like two women fighting supernatural crime in the 1910s in Egypt. It's... <sighs> the setting obviously makes it really unique and the main character, I think she's a lesbian? Or bi? Or a lesbian? Her and her sidekick are trying to uncover the person who claims to be Al Jahiz who unleashed all these supernatural beings onto the world and apparently he's come back. But Agent Fama thinks that he's an imposter and he's not the real thing but he murdered loads of people so that's why she has to investigate because it's a crime. Obviously I'm only halfway through and I will continue but first I do need to change, have a shower. <laughs> I'll get back to you when I'm not like dying also i finished my audiobook i didn't really talk about it but there was a reason for it it was literally one of the worst things i've ever read not for me at all one star don't want to talk about it i'm glad it was over I'm going to be finishing A Master of Gin today. It's taken me ages to finish it and I'm not entirely sure why. Every time that I start getting a little bit bored with the story, I get the impulse to start a new book, which is the whole point of this, is for me to actually finish a book instead of starting new ones. So I've been forcing myself to resist the urge, but I am about 90 pages from the end of this, so I'm almost done. Um, I'll update you on final thoughts when I've finished. Um, I'm also going to try and finish Reboot today. If that's the other book that I'm halfway through. That one, that one is just really tense. And because it's so tense, I just need a break. And then I don't go back to it because I'm like, oh, I need to mentally prepare for it for a really tense moment. But I will finish it. I'm going to finish two books today. It's going to be a new record. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm getting really camera shy. My neighbours are constantly out in their gardens. The sound carries because it's really quiet around here, there's not anything to mask the voice so if anyone's out in the garden they will hear me so. So once I finish these two I'll only have platform seven left which is the one where I'm not very far in. So after this once I've finished everything from now on maximum of two books I'm going to be reading at once because because the amount of books I had that I was in the middle of was just getting overwhelming and it just made me feel really disorganized so i'm gonna break the habit of starting a new book every time i get slightly bored <laughs> it's basically me just refusing to read anything that's slightly boring which is a terrible way to go about life so anyway let's get going <laughs> just finished Master of Gin. Towards the end it was it started getting a bit rushed. I felt like there were so many things introduced, like there was so many different parts of this world. It's kind of set contemporary, historical contemporary, but with gin. So it's basically like gin have arrived in Egypt and they're just living amongst mortals. I just felt like there could have been more world building. I feel like the author kind of focused on the history of uh, the history and I couldn't tell whether it was the history of Egypt or 
the history of certain myths and legends that were real in this world and then there was just random introductions of angels and ifrits i felt like all of this could have been introduced at the beginning as they're building the world and then introduce angels when necessary i don't know like a lot of characters and things were introduced only for a really small period of time and maybe i feel like the book should have been longer to give more of a chance to explore all the different aspects of this world because i felt like there was maybe a bit too much focus on the politics of egypt rather than the fantasy side if that makes any sense it reminded me of house of earth and blood by sarah t mass because it's they're both set in a city and they're both having to do this murder mystery inquiry trying to find who's the root cause of it and in the city there's humans but there's also non-humans magical beings so it kind of felt like that but just more politicky and obviously in less detail i think the books are only about 400 pages which for a full i don't think it's part of a series i think it's the standalone so maybe in my head i'm subconsciously comparing it to house house of earth and blood because although sarah j mass does like to go on a bit like you can't fault her for the amount of detail that she puts in you know but yeah now i'm going to move on to reboot finish that off hello back to this angle so reboot what can i say about reboot it's dystopian shock horror surprise oh my god could you believe no one saw that coming best way i could describe this is warm bodies meets shatter me yeah but more warm bodies kind of post-apocalyptic there's this virus that causes people to die then they wake up again a certain amount of time later and they're called reboots how long you're dead determines how powerful you are as a reboot so we're following ren who is who's known as 178 and 178 is like the longest reboot they've ever had so that means that she's really powerful but also means she's furthest away from being human so she's kind of like she doesn't really have emotions she doesn't really understand what laughter is she knows about it but she just can't feel it the government don't like reboots because they're not human so they basically lock them up and use them to bring in other reboots who are dangerous or take in humans who have murdered reboots things like that so the government are basically in control of them they control their every move constantly have cameras on them and they all live in this like facility ren who is number 178 she trains the other reboots so she gets a new reboot in um who's how many minutes 22 which is a very low number to be dead so he's practically still human He's very charming and he kind of wins over Ren. When Callum falls short of reboot standards, Ren is told to eliminate him. But the perfect soldier is done taking orders. And it's, it's just my type of story, to be honest. It's just dystopian, rebelling against the government. It's gone very tense. But I'm enjoying it. That's why I stopped, because it's so tense. <laughs> and I just can't cope, I just need a break, so I stop. So this is first book in a duology, which I love duologies because I usually hate the middle book in a tri trilogy. Yeah, I was going to say triology then. <laughs> but yeah, it goes quite quickly, so, so I'll definitely get it done by this afternoon, which is good. How should I say it's like Shatter Me? Vibes? Okay, ignore the Shatter Me comparison. Yeah, ignore that. What am I on about? <laughs> Another book down! It is about half two, so 
In three hours I've finished two books. <laughs> Reality has enough much left but you know it's still an achievement for me. So this was everything I expected it to be. Pretty straightforward dystopian tale, you know like you believe in the government but then you actually find out that maybe you shouldn't believe in the government and then you try and escape. And then there's like, you know, tense scenes where they're escaping. <laughs> will they make it? Will they not? This is perfect for anyone who likes a standard dystopian sort of zombie-ish. It's not really like gruesome zombie, but like, it's just the fact they die, they're reawakened, they're just a bit stronger. They're dead, but they're just like stronger. That's just, it's a fast start, there's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing like mind boggling but it's still great in its own way. And I'm finally getting all my <laughs> bookmarks back. <laughs> oh, so satisfying. So technically I only have one book left and that's Platform 7, although I did say I did start a new book, um, but I'm not gonna count that because otherwise I'm just be filming this forever because I will always start a new book before I finish an old one. It's just who I am as a person. The urge to pick up magic by Andy Sage rather than Platform 7 is strong but I must resist. It's okay there's nothing wrong with Platform 7 it's just I feel like not a lot's happening. Genuinely picked it up thinking it was sort of like a thriller mystery sort of thing but it kind of just talks about depression and you know ending your life and that sort of thing so not what I expected. This is why I thought it was a mystery. So it says Platform 7 at 4am Peterborough railway station is deserted and there's a man sitting there and what the man doesn't realise is that he is company. Lisa Evans knows what he has decided. She knows what he is about to do as she tries and fails to stop him walking to the platform edge. No one is more desperate to understand what connects her to this man than Lisa Evans herself. After all, she was the first of the two to die. Doesn't that sound like a mystery? Maybe it will be. I'm only on page 83 but... Let's read. I've taken out the bookmark. I'm just not feeling it. I think I'm just gonna have to like pass this up. It wasn't even mine to begin with, it was my mum's. So I'm just gonna pass it along. I'm sure someone else would love to read it. I'm just, maybe I'm just not in the mood to read about that sort of thing right now, or especially after all the things that I've read already, like I've been reading recently, it just doesn't really match up to that level that I'm used to. Of enjoyment that is like it's probably a good book but uh, level of enjoyment I'm just gonna class that one as a dinner so I've finished all the books that I set out to read mostly mostly so technically now I'm only reading magic which I've just started I've just started an audiobook but the audiobooks I listen to before I go to sleep to like get my mind off real life or just you know have that before I go to sleep so at least I have something to think about and then I've only just started magic so I'll count that as the book that I've just started after all of these you know I can put all, them all back on my bookshelf they're not gonna be sitting on my bedside table for another few months I'll probably include some clips on the beach but just to round it off on a nice sunny note so thank you to everyone who's made it this far thank you for watching and I'll see you next time Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, just been reading. Yeah. Um, no, I just finished Master of Gin.